All right, let's open up the running play here for the Pittsburgh Steelers. So there's Broderick Jones right there on the left side of your screen lineup at right tackle. So here the Steelers are actually, are actually going to pull Jones across the formation this direction. We're going to get double teams right here working up to the play side linebacker. We're going to get back blocks everywhere else. Darnell Washington's going to come down and kind of protect the gap right there to make sure there's no penetration across the face this direction. And the running back, Warren, right here is going to take a step this way and kind of run of a counter path to try and get outside. But here the big block is obviously going to be Jones. He's trying to get on the guy who's going to actually be the kind of outside contained player, which would normally be the stand-up defensive end here. But 58 for Seattle kind of works himself inside. Broderick Jones smartly recognizes that and goes to the guy who's going to fit what's going to end up being a DB. Jones delivers a bone-crushing block for the Steelers. Let's check out how he does. All right, there's a snap. You can see the double team forming. You can see Broderick Jones pulling that direction right there. You can see 58 for uh, Seattle work down inside. Jones recognizes that and bounces outside. And there he recognizes the DB. I believe that's Julian Love, the veteran safety right there, and introduces Julian Love to the turf and demolishes him. This is absolutely awesome stuff. Let's watch this whole play, folks. Gets out in space, great athlete, buries him. Let's back that up and do it frame by frame. Number 20, boom, arms failing totally falling down, and then buried into the dirt. Phenomenal work here from Broderick Jones. Look, it's obviously a little bit of a mismatch, but I tell you what, folks, this is why you drafted Broderick Jones. His athleticism, his nastiness, his physical demeanor. This is bully ball. This is Pittsburgh Steelers bully ball. You absolutely ran over the Seattle Seahawks, and Broderick Jones had a phenomenal day with plays just like this, being more physical, more athletic, just tougher than the opposing defense, and it's why the Steelers got a big win. Yeah, Nick, and I think we see Broderick Jones sub five second 40 yard dash time right here. He actually gets out of the hole. He's firing on this pool. Like you said, he runs over this DB. And I think this is where Broderick Jones has shined this year. He has been very athletic in this game in particular. It shows in his consistency of play. He was second best game of the year for him, graded most complete game as a full time starter, 70.8 offensive grade. 70.7 run blocking grade, 65.3 pass blocking grade. For this Steelers offensive line, those are phenomenal numbers. I think Broderick Jones is growing into a star on this Steelers offensive line. All right, sticking with the running game, there is Jones right there once again at right tackle on the left side of your screen. This is just going to be a nice, I kind of call it a gap scheme. It's really what you hear normal, the duo kind of concept. You hear announcers call it. This plays a really good example of it. It's just a downhill running scheme, running right behind Broderick Jones on a big double team action right here. So it's going to be a double team between Jones and the right guard right there, working up to the middle linebacker. On the back side, you're just going to get everybody working out this direction. And on the play side, these three guys right here, the two tight ends and the receiver number 11, are responsible for 54, 55, and the safety, Julian Love, right there on the edge of your screen. The play is designed essentially to go right here, right in this gap. So you want these three guys to create a seal. You want everyone on the backside to create a seal this direction. And then you need a big-time double team, big-time movement right here. Let's watch how this play goes. This is a great job by Broderick Jones. Okay, you can see the double team right there. You can see the linebacker number zero filling. So you can see the guard right there. Great job. He's already got his eyes on him. You can see these three guys for Pittsburgh are picking up those three guys. Everybody on the backside is working out. Again, you can see the play. It's going to be a downhill running scheme right there. Look at this job right here on Broderick Jones. Again, the CLC Hunks get some good penetration. I love the running back being patient right there for Pittsburgh. But again, let's watch Jones' entire rep. He gets on 95 and keeps driving, keeps working, throws him out of the hole and puts him on the ground. Opens up a huge hole for Najee Harris. Again, touchdown. This is bully ball, folks. First play, we saw we showed Broderick Jones out in space. This is Jones winning on a three technique, a defensive lineman, and taking a man who's, like I say all the time, who's mortgage payment, like his ability to have a house in the Seattle area. It's a beautiful area, but he won't be able to afford his house if he gets keeps getting blown out of the hole by guys like Broderick Jones because this is absolutely humiliating for 95. And likewise, it's a great rep for Broderick Jones. This guy is taught he can't get moved. He not only gets moved, he completely gets turned around and shoved out of the hole by big number 77. This kind of physical football and execution is how the Steelers can make some noise in the playoffs. I know Mason Rudolph has played well so far, and he's had a strong finish to the season. But this is how the Steelers can win, by playing bully ball and by winning up front with their offensive line. All right, going again with the running game. Similar kind of concept here for the Pittsburgh Steelers. It's now Broderick Jones is sort of on the backside of where this is starting to go. And by that, I mean he's going to be working out this direction, and the double team is going to be on the other side of the offensive line working up this way. And then you've got 
these three guys for the Pittsburgh Steelers are responsible for these three guys for the Seattle Seahawks. So again, for this play to be successful, there needs to be a great double team inside with these two guys up to zero for Seattle. And it doesn't work as, out as well as Steelers would hope. But again, I want everyone to focus on Broderick Jones and watch what he does to 53. He absolutely literally buries this human being off the screen. It's another physically dominating rep for Jones. Let's check out how it goes. All right, you can see the double team right there. You can see it's got to work up to number zero. You can see how these three guys on the backside have to handle these three. And you can see the one-on-one -on -one blocks right here on what I would call the kind of the play side. It's kind of a weird concept, but this is more of a backside scheme because the double team right here is between the left guard and center. But irregardless, this is Broderick Jones, one-on-one -on -one the defensive end. Watch what he does to 53 here. Gets on him, drives him, and buries him off the screen. Folks, this is where the entire Seattle Seahawks front seven is right there, right in the middle. You can see this mass of humanity. Where is 53 for Seattle? He's nowhere near the screen. This is an unbelievable rep for Broderick Jones. Let me go back to the very beginning here. Look at this, guys. He gets on 53, another human being that's supposed to be good at football, and drives him off the screen. This looks even more impressive from the wide copy. Let's check it out. He gets on him right there. Look how much he drives him and humiliates him right there. I mean, that's stuff you see in college. That's what you see when you see an SEC team in a bowl game against maybe a, a not a group of five school, not a good school. This is dominating performance from Broderick Jones, and this is what you've been waiting all season to see, Steelers fans. This is great football from the rookie tackle. Yeah, Nick, and I just think all around, the Steelers did a great job running the ball this game, and it's no small fact. It is par partially due to Broderick Jones having the highest run blocking grade of his season. But there's a little interesting snippet in here about Zero, former Pittsburgh Steelers linebacker Devin Bush. He said he cracked the Steelers' code. He cracked the uh, the offensive formula for the Steelers. He knew exactly what they are going to do, circled the game on there as a revenge game. But Broderick Jones and this offensive line, they proved him so wrong the revenge game was no more because they absolutely had one of their best rushing performances of the season behind this stout offensive line anchored by Broderick Jones on the right tackle side. Najee Harris, 122 yards. Jalen Warren, 75 yards. Both rushing for over four yards a carry. Jalen Warren, 5.8 yards a carry. Really impressive performance by all, and this was no small part. The absolute dominant, dominant run blocking game from Broderick Jones. All right, let's switch it up and go some pass protection here for Broderick Jones. There he is, of course, at right tackle. So the Seattle Seahawks, you can see right here, they've got a lot of guys lined up on the line of scrimmage. They got one, two, three guys right here on the right side of the offense, the left side of the screen. They got one, two, three guys walked up over here. So in this situation, anytime you have three down defensive linemen, I know number 53 is a stand-up guy, but he's basically a defensive end in the Seattle Seahawks defense. The whole point here is to create one-on-one -on -one matchups because this guy, number 90, he can either work this way, he can work this way. The center has to react to pick him up. The right guard obviously has to focus on 99. That means you got a one-on-one -on -one matchup right here, the right tackle 77 on 53. This is really the whole premise of this scheme here for anyone who walks up people like this defensively is to create one-on-one -on -one matchups. The theory for the defense, the reason they come up with this, because again, this is creating a, a tough time for their secondary because obviously six guys walked up. The Steelers are an empty advantage for the Pittsburgh Steelers offense if they can protect and get rid of the football. Let's watch how Broderick Jones handles this one-on-one -on -one matchup right here. Like we showed before, what Jones's performance against the Pittsburgh Steelers illustrated is that he is head and shoulders above the rest of the Pittsburgh offensive line already so young in his career. Let's check out how this play goes. All right, you can see the one-on-one -on -one matchups right here across the board. You can see the Seattle Seahawks. They're bringing six people. Obviously, that's one more than the Pittsburgh Steelers can block. So, obviously, Rudolph, he's got to get rid of the ball. He doesn't get rid of the ball. Unfortunately, he has to take the sack. But, again, like on the previous play, I want everyone to watch how it ends up. Look at the rest of the Seahawks defense, their front seven, their, their other five guys that rush. Look where they are, and look where 53 is, Jones's responsibility. He absolutely has them 12 yards away from the play. Let's go back to the very beginning and break down Jones's technique, first of all. So outstanding first kick step. I love how it gets depth, but look at his hands right there. Look at that punch right into the shoulder of number 53. 53 is trying to get into some speed rush move, but Jones with his good base, I love how he's he's not too high. He's in a good low position, his chest over his thighs. He delivers a great punch to the body frame of 53, and then he keeps his feet working and then squares them up right there and locks on him. That is phenomenal technique, folks. That's all pro-level stuff here from Broderick Jones. Again, great kick step, great hands, locks on, dominating rep here for 77. The rest of the offensive line, all right, obviously not so much. Ends up being a sack for the Pittsburgh Steelers offense. 
I would argue Mason Rudolph probably should have gotten rid of the football quicker, but that's neither here nor there. Focusing on Jones, this is a great rep here in pass protection from this exciting young Steelers rookie. All right, going the other direction now, there is Broderick Jones. You can barely see him behind the motion man coming across this way. He's at right tackle. So this is going to be a toss sweep here for the Pittsburgh Steelers, but I kind of think this is more of an outside zone concept. So basically what you're trying to get in this situation is you're trying to get the play side defenders dislocated. And so what I mean by that is you can see the relationship right here between all the defenders, right? You can see between that defensive end and that defensive tackle, there's about, I don't know, maybe about two yards of difference between there, right? And obviously you got the linebacker in between. That's the gap integrity that the defense is trying to uh, protect and create over the course of a running play in order to fit and stop the run. So anytime you run like a zone scheme or any toss scheme, the defense is going to adjust with that in order to keep the gap integrity the same, right? They want to keep the same relationship, the same distance between all the defenders. That way, when the running back tries to cut back, he has nowhere to go. There's defenders in every single gap. The way you can beat that and the way you have to beat that on offense is you've got to get these guys dislocated. You can either do that by reaching them outright, but that's really hard to do. In fact, that's downright impossible to do in the NFL against a somewhat competent defender. The best way to do that is to get on him and get him horizontally moved or vertically moved or both in that direction and create a massive dislocation and create a lot of grass inside of him for the running back to cut back behind. That's exactly what Jones does on this play. Let's check it out. Uh, you can see the toss, and you can see right there what the Steelers are trying to do. They're trying to get everybody running right. Right there, 78 gives some help to Broderick Jones, but watch what Jones does. He throws him to the side and keeps pushing him, and you can see how Najee Harris cuts behind him. Again, right here, I'm going to freeze frame it. You can see this gap and all this grass inside right here that adjusts for the Steelers running back. Right here, this is probably the best example of it. Again, this was the interior defensive lineman right there. See where he is on the hash? You can see the defensive end, 55, I believe that is for Seattle. That's about six, seven yards of separation right there, maybe even a little bit more. If you go back to the very beginning of the play, that's about two or three yards separation right there, maybe about four or five yards right there. Okay, so maybe about four yards, we'll say. So right there at the end of this, when the Steelers, when Najee Harris cuts back right there behind him, you can see there's about six, seven yards of gap space right there. That is enough room for Najee Harris to get north and south to cut back, break through an arm tackle and make a really nice run. Again, this is a great run by 22. I'm going to give him a lot of credit. But the only way this run works is if they get dislocation on these guys. And you can see all the Steelers offensive linemen, tackles, tight ends, everyone's working down the field. 78 working hard too. Give some help on 55 that works up on a linebacker. This is great hustle, great physical play across the board. Watch 73 right here with the hustle play too, getting on a linebacker right there. But this is what dislocation does. I want to really highlight this, folks. You can see right here, number zero for Seattle. He's going to this gap right here because he thinks that's where the running back's going to cut to. But because he dislocates right there, you can see, see how number zero kind of stops right there because he thinks this is where he needs to be. But because Broderick Jones dislocates 55 so much, number zero for Seattle actually cuts him off too short, cuts off his pursuit too short and allows 73 to pick him up. Najee Harris is able to cut behind it for a really nice run. Again, it's all because you can dislocate the defense, and it starts with 77 and Broderick Jones doing a nice job being an effort player and physical and getting the job done. And they, I think this just shows how great of a job Broderick Jones is doing in the uh, run blocking game. And we've seen this overall, I think, all season. He has grown tremendously out of, uh, as a player. When we look even the pass block game as well, you know, Outside of two games this season, he has not let up any sacks. Only two games this season has he let up a sack. I think Broderick Jones has grown as the season has gone on. In this last game, as I said earlier, this is one of his most complete games, one of his most dominant run blocking games. And I think if he can grow and build off this performance, we're going to see him in this last game against the Ravens get better and potentially as they go into the playoffs. We're going to see a Broderick Jones who's going to be an absolute star for this Steelers team. All right, this next play right here is just a good old classic fundamental football play by the Steelers up front. Again, playing bully ball with the Seattle Seahawks. There is Broderick Jones right there at right tackle, of course. You can see the motion man, Deontay Johnson. He came across the screen this way to force the defense to go this direction just to get some flow from the defense up front. But it's just going to be bully football, right? You're going to get a double team right here working up to the linebacker. You're going to get... The tight end, Washington, working there. You're going to get the slot receiver working there to the safety. You can't see there's a cornerback right off the edge of your screen right there. He's the only outside contained player. You're going to get just double teams and blockouts right here, 
working up this direction right here. And again, it's just a downhill running play right here. This is a really nice run here by number 30. He had a really nice game against the Seattle Seahawks. He ends up bouncing it outside this direction. But again, I want people to focus on the movement on this double team because you cannot bounce it on the outside. It sounds counterintuitive, but if you don't get movement inside, it's really hard for running backs to bounce it outside. Let's check out how the play goes. Right, so there's a snap. You can see the double team inside. You can see the movement up front. Watch how deep Warren can get into the hole before he decides to cut it outside. So right here, does great spit and move, great outside run there, really nice run by number 30. But again, watch how deep he can get into the hole. This is where it's so hard for a DB, because right here at this point, this DB, he wants to play about two, three yards away from all these bodies, but he has to jump into the muck right here because how close number 30 is able to get to the pile of humanity inside right here. And the only reason Warren can get that close is because they get great movement at the point of attack. They get on this double team. They drive him back. Washington does a good job. And because Warren's able to press the hole, you hear that all the time, press the hole. And when the opportunity is there, make the cut, make a man miss. That's great work. And again, it only works because you can get deep into the hole right there. If there's a lot of penetration right, right here, if they don't get movement and there's a lot of garbage right there, Warren has to bounce it right here, right? If he has to bounce it here, he runs right into the DB, ends up being probably no gain, maybe a tackle for loss. But because he's able to get two or three yards deeper, it forces the DB to play flatter, which gives Warren a great angle to cut back outside, ends up being a nice run. Again, great run by 30, but it all starts up front, getting double teams at the point of attack, just like Broderick Jones here did with some help from 78. Great rep once again with bully ball due to Broderick Jones. All right, here we go into the game. Time to get a first down to clinch a victory. Big time road victory against the Seattle Seahawks. And this is a play right here that everybody in the NFL runs. It's cert certainly in these kind of situations. It's just going to be an inside zone kind of concept. Everyone's going to work to their left up front for the offense. Just kind of take the gap over to their left, work up this direction. The tight end's going to come across this way and kick out the end man on the line of scrimmage. So the whole point here is to kind of get bodies on bodies working this way everyone across the board the tight end has a seal here and the running back just gets north and south probably just like this and tries to get a first down here to end the game and this is a great wrap up front by everybody for the pittsburgh steelers we all get a hat on a hat Najee harris does a nice job there as well but again i want to focus on broderick jones he's got the key block he has to get on bush and drive him out of the hole to give Najee harris a great opportunity to get a first down let's check out how it goes all right, you can see everyone up front working for the Pittsburgh Steelers, working to their left, getting a hat on a hat right there. The, the Seattle Seahawks have extra people in the box. The Steelers do a great job. They don't block the safety, but they don't need to, right? You have Washington working across the formation to the end man on the line of scrimmage. you got hats on hats inside, and you have Jones right here on Bush. You guys can see where this play is going to develop. You can see Najee Harris. He has a chance to get north and south right here, but Broderick Jones has to get on zero, has to get on Bush and contain him and get movement. He gets on him, drives him out of the hole, gives him a shove. Easy run for Najee Harris. Smart play to slide down and get the first down to ice the game. Again, right here, there's two things to keep your eye out here if you're Broderick Jones. One, don't hold. He does a great job. Gets his hand on him, doesn't tug, lets him go. Great smart play there to not hold. But number two, he's physical. He gets movement at the point of attack. He doesn't give Bush a chance to maybe play off and make a tackle right here. There's a lot of guys right here in this situation, these kind of zone schemes, they kind of waddle up to linebackers. Linebackers kind of shock them with their hands and then shed the offensive lineman and make the play. Cause again, it's coming right inside right here, but Broderick Jones delivers a punch, delivers a shove. Bush has no chance to come off and make the tackle. Steelers win again, bully ball. This is how the Steelers beat Seattle. This is how they can make noise in the playoffs. And it all starts with Broderick Jones getting better and better up front. And Nick, you brought it up perfectly. This is a, an attribute of Broderick Jones we've seen. He's played a lot of clean football this season. And I think this goes back, oh, week 12 was the last time he had a penalty. Only two penalties on the season so far, like you said. Can't hold because that is going to actually blow a play like this and potentially not give the Steelers a chance to ice the game. Maybe the Seahawks get the ball back. This was into something where Broderick Jones, he could not hold. He does not hold, and that's not the type of player he was. But that's not the most impressive thing to me about Broderick Jones, is this is a guy coming out of Georgia. He was a left tackle. This is a guy through all preseason, all training camp, he was a left tackle. Through the first four games of this season, he was a left tackle. Then he was asked to switch. I think we have seen Broderick Jones grow this season in a position that's unfamiliar to him, and now he is coming, he's blossoming, he's becoming an elite-level player. 
And this is all from where this entire offseason, the entire first part of the season, he has to be a left tackle, then he has to switch to the right. I think this is something we're going to see out of Broderick Jones, where he can become an absolute monster next year once he has an entire offseason at the right tackle position. I think we're going to see a different football player and even better football player. 